leprechauns with green hair and uh, just some wild looking shirts, Jim McMahon looking sunglasses, cheering on the king in week number eight, Greg Lothian. And Lothian just, you hear the crowd, you see the shot, 10 in the pit. Now you know why he averages 212 in four weeks. And I'll tell you what, whether it's a green shirt, an emerald ball, whatever, Greg Lothian just seems to be on uh, on his mark this year. That's right. It's, bowlers do run in in uh, switches, and I tell you what, Greg has been hot. He's been the man to beat, and he's jumped up and earned it. This could be the showdown we've been waiting for. This is interesting, too, because before the match, Bill Heflin went over and tapped Lothian on the back. Uh, uh, Heflin has been bowling for more years than Lothian has been alive. <laughs> Bill Heflin, 51 years old against 22-year-old Greg Lothian, so it should be an interesting match of experience against raw power, Dave. You flair right for that. the dramatic, isn't it, Bo? I love it. It's true, though. Whoa. <laughs> Second for eight. The arm swing went up, Dave. A nice tip today. And uh, Bill Heflin has just mastered it. It's almost automatic. Probably does it in his sleep. I mean to tell you, as, uh, as the tip touched upon, arm swing can help you do this. Send a head pin to the wall. Coming back there, you see it in the left gutter now. Ten pins. All of them doing their job. This man has got them working overtime. The only right-hander out of a four-man field today. Oh, ooh, curling right around the 10-pin, Dave. Tough, tough hit to lose. Greg Lothian threw that ball as well as you possibly could expect. Wrap 10, strong 10, ringing 10, whatever you want to call it, it was perfect, but to no avail. Now, since the first right-hander is left a 10-pin, we will probably hear him kick the rack. Right on the money, Dave. <laughs> well, well as... As, you know, just as in any sport, there are certain things that you just have to contend with. This particular house happens to have the type of ball returns that go well up the lane. Now, when you're shooting a 10-pin, for example, a right-hander, you're way to the left. Now, to keep your balance, you normally kick your right leg around. Unfortunately, there's a ball return. That's just one of the things you have to contend with. You don't complain about it. It's not a disadvantage. It's just another facet of this multifaceted game of bowling. Sure, and you have to adapt to it, and that's why Craig Lothian is averaging 212 on the uh, TV King this year. Take a look at a shot uh, right here. Greg Lothian throws this ball as well as all of them. Ten pins in the pit. Watch. One, three, pocket entry. No deflection there, ladies and gentlemen. Six pin kicking out the ten. Bill Heflin working on two. Trying to make it three. Yes. A three bagger for Bill Heflin. So our vote might be in jeopardy today, guys. <laughs> I think Bill Heflin is really up for this match. He's been waiting for it. And uh, starting off with three strikes and the way he bowled the other two games, we could give away a boat from Jimmer's Marine today with a Mercury outboard. That, of course, for the 300 game. We already mentioned that 7-Up will uh, give to the high man or lady this year a... Uh, black and white television for the high score currently held by Daryl Higgins 269. Almost beat the last game too. <laughs> the first Aaron shot Bill Heflin has had going wide leaving the 3, 5, 6, 10 what happened? A mistake. Who knows which mistake he made there's only about 30 different ones that you can do but this one yields an extremely difficult spare the three, five, six, ten should be played, hitting the three and the six with the ball. Oh. Uh, in other words, it should be played just like Bill Heflin. Did. No, not not textbook. Should have been a little further to the right, but it did work. Let's take a look at it here. Now this ball should be about two more inches to the right-hand side of your screen. It takes it straight back, almost chops, leaving the five pin. But it's a spare, and he's on a strike. I tell you what, we've got a match here. I can just feel it. it's going to be a tenth-frame game. And, Bo, we've seen some of those this year, too. We sure have. It's been an exciting year for us. Right there, right there. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, boy, that's the worst break I've seen Greg Lothian have all year. 7-10 here in frame number four. Didn't make his leprechauns too happy. Right there, let's take a look at it. A little bit of deflection. Head pin, center your screen, going way to the left. And then the five pin takes it out from keeping the seven pin from going down. 7-10, light pocket rip, out of the pit, maybe. Not today. Not quite. 
Wasn't that the angle of the ball coming into the pocket, David, that created that uh, particular leave? The maybe a little bit wider angle? Ex exactly, Bo, but you can leave you can leave that light ripping 710 from almost anywhere on the lane anymore. The game has changed over the years. The plastic pins, yes, they've increased scores, but they've also created some weird leaves. Right there is one of them. In the old days, you'd never leave a 710 on a light hit. Today, it's fairly common. Let's see how Lothian bounces back from that open frame right there, right here in right number five. Slaps the hands together as he leaves the solid 10. Second time that's happened today for the, Mr. Lothian. I tell you what, all those times that we've seen him carry a marginal hit or a scout off the wall, payback right now in five frames. He's got right. three bad breaks. Right and, that happens too. <laughs> and, and, and you don't want to give this man a, 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 an opening because Bill Heflin will just capitalize. But you know, it, it just seems like since the first time I saw him last year on the show, he puts me in mind of Julius Boros. Uh, the older golfers will remember him. Just the type of guy who's consistent. He goes up. He doesn't take a lot of time in sizing it up like some of the younger men. He just goes, he does it, and everything is patterned. The arm swing, as you said, it's just a follow through. It, it's almost textbook, and it's just repetitious every time and now you know why he's so successful midway through our championship match let's set it up the man you're looking at bill heflin enjoys a 38 pin lead over our king Lothian. and he's just adding to that lead right now bill heflin who has seen his share of uh, king games he's been competing for 15 years dave bad breaks for lothian good breaks for bill heflin had their three pin coming off the wall bumping into the six there you see it <laughs> the story is all too evident. 38 pins in the well. Greg Lothian, but we've got some paper left, so don't count him out. Come on, get in there! Get in there! And the seven pin not helping Greg Lothian coming back here. That's a shame. That's a shame. Even though the, the, the uh, ball itself was quite high, uh, I guess you can say it was a good break. It could have been a split, but it wobbled but did not fall. Sometimes it's just not in the cards. All right. Dave, you know, for people looking on, they, they saw they saw Greg with that emerald colored green ball last week and, and this week with the shirt and no ball. I mean, well, what what exactly does, does the green ball do? Last week, the condition dictated that he use a piece of equipment that he normally doesn't use and uh, successfully defended his title. Uh, the tournament bowler nowadays will typically carry four, five, or six bowling balls to a tournament. The green one last week would not be the best ball to use this week. Comes back with a strike for Greg Lothian. Bo, as we mentioned, Dave, uh, Dave Newrath's name on the leaderboard at Stumps for next week, but they're already thinking of qualifying two weeks down the road. Right, we are uh, qualifying this weekend at Stumps Lanes and of course our leaders as we alluded to in our first game and uh, next Saturday and Sunday we're going to be at Strikes and Spares and Crash visiting our friends out there. Bill Heflin just not letting up one iota. Four or five time king in, in his 15 years of competing in the TV King and well, I'll tell you what, uh, looks like we may see a new king this week. Only the third one this year which is... Uh, I guess a surprise, considering we had about seven or eight of them last year. Right now, the match, 49 pins. Bill Heflin, the leader. Three frames left. If he marks out, <coughs> he's our winner. Okay. Well, that put the old whammy on him, Dave. Sorry, Bill. Four, six, ten for Bill Heflin. All this does, Bill, now the situation, and folks at home, if you're in a match play situation, you're on a couple of strikes. Pin count is important. If Bill would happen to miss them all, he's going to lose six pins. If he takes the two, he only loses two pins. The experienced veteran that he is, he knows the pin count could be the difference. It's a computer in his mind just totaling up those that pin count. So the uh, Lothian's leprechaun is still giving vocal support, but as the paper runs out, Dave and Bo, looks like Lothian's reign over the kingship will also. It's very easy to tell you the situation this time. Greg Lothian, eighth frame, has got to have this strike to have any chance of winning. No, get in there. Get in there. 
it's all over but the shouting basically bill Heflin would have to open in both the ninth and tenth frames to finish for 199 assuming greg would make this he would have to strike out to win there you see the situation greg lothian needs all the strikes bill Heflin has to open in order for our kingship to change just have to see what the cards hold. Lothian's going out like a king. Of course, every week we come to you because of our gracious sponsors, Huda Pole, and all the many sponsors down the line. And we have some representatives from Huda Pole here today, Bo. We're very pleased to see Mr. Phil Burdick back again this week. He joined us last week, and he's here today. We're real happy to see him. And we would like to thank our friends from Grippo for making such a great effort coming out every Sunday and delivering the potato chips we're giving out and our sponsors. Super chips, too. There's uh, Lothian with the strike, and uh, if he's going to lose, he's going to lose like a king would lose because he is uh, just a quality bowler, and, and I'm sure after four weeks holding the top spot, we'll probably see him a little little ways down the road. Although, Bo and Dave, we're running out of time. It doesn't seem possible. Eight weeks already. We have three regular weeks left, and then the last week on April the 13th will be the finals, and you will have an opportunity to see one of the people that bowled on TV all year. They will go out on Saturday over at Penthouse, bowl a six-game block. The top four from that qualifier will emerge onto the show the next day, and we will shoot it out for the big money. It was a lot of fun last year. This is a situation with any kind of a mark in the 10th frame. Bill Heflin is our winner, regardless of what Greg Lothian will do. Did it to him again. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. 2-4. The 2-4, it is choppable. Bill Heflin shot it a thousand times in his career. If he makes the spare, Greg Lothian cannot conceivably win. If he chops it, Greg Lothian could strike out to retain his kingship. 2-4. He could have probably made that blindfold, Dave. You mentioned he probably made about a thousand of them in his lifetime. Make it a thousand and one. Without even shooting, he has 211. The best Greg could do is 207. We have a new king this week, Tom. Bill Heflin. And when we come your way next week, I just want to make a little reminder so you could make a mental note of it. Uh, we'll be coming your way 12.30 next week. 12.30 to 1.30. Well, That's correct. Uh, uh, network has a program that will uh, bump us back a half hour. So when you tune your dial in next week at noon, uh, fear not, we'll be coming 30 minutes later. Greg Lothian just wants to get this one over with. Probably uh, we'll go over to Stumps, try to qualify. He sure will. He's scheduled to bowl a couple shifts this afternoon. Ooh. David, watch Ooh. out. Ooh, as good as he's bowling, he's probably going to be one of the guys to run around me. Well, Dave, we certainly hope your uh, pin count stands up because while we hate to lose you from the booth, we'd love to see you uh, back in competition again. Competition of the television nature. It would be a lot of fun, and it's uh, really impossible to know what's going to happen, but let's see. So, week eight brings us a new king, Bill Heflin, and we come back. You see the, uh, the old king, Greg Lothian, right there. We'll pass out checks to all our competitors as you see the final score, Bill Heflin with a whopping 221 to Lothian's 185. Check time, and we come back. Don't miss us. Back for presentations in week eight here at LaRue Lanes in Highland Heights, Kentucky. And before we actually get to the check presentation, we have a 300 game in the qualifiers. Uh, Charlie Golfus, why don't you present it? Tell us about Jim Beckler's famous feat. <laughs> Jim, I'd like to present you with this ring. And I watched him last week practice. 
and he couldn't carry the seven or the ten pin out. And then he went over and threw the first 12 solid in the pocket, which made me very, very happy because I had to present him with a ring, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, Charlie, Jim, congratulations, Thank Super Bowl, and that, that goes along with the 747 series coming in. Well, the ring is, is a popular item, and it's probably to some more prestigious than the, the check, but guys will take checks, right, Dave Nureth? That's exactly right, Tom, and since you're right here, Jim, we've got a $225 check for you. Brilliant bowling. We've remarked about uh, arm swing on the show as a tip before. You've got one of the most unique we I've yet to see. How did you develop that style? That I don't know. It just just the way I started with it. In other words, you just went out and bowled, and that's the way it wound up. Well, you've done a great <laughs> job with it. There's a check for two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Congratulations you. again, Kerry. You ran into a few tough breaks, but uh, you're steady. We'll probably see you go over and take down my number this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Just for that, uh, we'll keep your check. But no, one hundred and fifty dollars for your efforts today. Congratulations, and Craig. Uh, it had to happen one of these weeks, and uh, I guess this was as good as any, but Bill Heflin really put some numbers on you. $375, that rounds you out for a nice total yep. in all these weeks. Congratulations. Tommy? Dave, thank you very much. Gentlemen, very good bowling today. Thank you. Well, Bill Heflin and his son, a grandson, Mikey. Uh, grandson, yes. Uh, you did something today that, that uh, no one has been able to do in the last four weeks. I guess you just had to stay on top of that young lion. Well, I knew I had to throw a lot of strikes today because every one of these guys was capable of it. I knew if I got it to Greg, I'd have to still throw more strikes. So things went my way, and uh, I got the breaks. And because you got the breaks, we give you a plaque and a $750 check, and we'll put a crown on your head. The king of bowling for half a dozen times in 15 years, Bill Heflin. Congratulations, Bill. So week eight is history here on Huda Pulse TV, King of Bowling. When we come back next week for week nine, we'll be at Stumps Lanes over in Western Hills. So for Dave Newrath, Bo Huda Pole, and myself, Tom Verrato, why don't you come back and see us on week nine of Huda Pulse TV, King of Bowling. by the Hudipole Brewing Company, America's great small brewery. Time.